Good morning. My name is Ignacio Ramirez, and I'll be your moderator for this morning sessions. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. Now, this is a school, and it is not a church, and yet we are affiliated with a church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity unto this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We have established brand schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established on February 2021. Now, in this school, we use and teach by the true and originated titles for the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is. Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word of Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Well, Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on his chart in his pure spirit state as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud is no, no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now, this shape and form could only be seen in a divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build it exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in this school to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten aims of the school are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the sticks of race nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers laid to man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation time, and they to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh, and ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah, and tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watcher is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have prayer by Dr. Harry Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is John, the fifth chapter, uh, verses uh, 28. 28 to 57. And our scripture reader will be Dr. Nanette Ramirez. Do we have a selection of music after the prayer? We'd like to thank Yahweh, our Elohim, for bringing us here again this morning so we can learn a little bit about his purpose, pattern, and plan through his son, Yahshua. We ask him for this, this wisdom and knowledge and stability so we could stay stand on these last days. And we ask this in his son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Amen.
class. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina, the Scripture Research Association. I'll be reading John, the fifth chapter, verses 28 through 57. The woman then left her water pot, oh, excuse me, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and live, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing, as I am taught of my Father I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, he will say, Thy witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works I do, and they bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters having never learned? Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yahweh or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his own glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a demon who goeth about to kill thee. Joshua answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. I have read John, the fifth chapter, verse 28 through 57. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
All right, thank you once again. Uh, uh, sorry, a little delay this morning. There's technical difficulties, like always. But anyway, we got them straightened out. Uh, yeah, I've been following up Dr. Will Williams at the symposium there in Chicago, uh, Northside Branch is putting it on. We've been following it uh, since the beginning, and also today at the end of the, the sessions. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it, all the speakers there, okay? They all have something to say. You get a little bit out of everybody, you know. But uh, before I, we're a small group here, so I guess I'll give, be the first speaker. Anyway, what I want to do is get into presenting a foundation, okay? A basic foundation, hopefully a good foundation. That way, the next speaker could pick up the baton and run with whatever uh, subject, so I like to call this, uh, what do you call it, the, when you go in the book, the uh, table of content. Because in here, you have all, uh, 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 whatever stories you want to get into, whatever precepts you want to get into, it's all here. This is a panoramic. Not just a plain vision, but a panoramic vision, which means an unlimited view in every direction. Okay? I know people refer to, oh, you have a vision. No, panoramic vision. There's a difference. Get Habakkuk 2 and 2, since we're speaking about visions. Okay. Habakkuk 2 and 2. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that every one may read it fluently. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is yet for an appointed time. And some of the speakers made reference to when Dr. Kenley received this vision in 1931. Okay, he said, don't believe me that I said I had a vision, but make me prove it to you. And at the time when I first came in, they would throw beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay, read. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. This vision or panoramic vision shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarry, wait for it. Now that's the last of the prophecies. Okay, there's another uh, I think in the Holy Name version where it says Without a prophetic vision, the people perish. Okay? Now, this vision that Dr. Kennedy had, okay, before he became a doctor, is A.C. Kennedy. Okay, there's a little story that goes along with that. If you know the history of uh, the schools that are uh, made, okay, especially IBMR, okay? The people wanted a school. Well, they got a school, and look what happened, okay? It's no different. History repeats itself over and over. But anyway, he had this, this is the first chart that Dr. Kaley had made. The chart on plan or plan of salvation. Up here you have circles, okay? Which is like the chart over there. Okay, uh, ages and dispensations, eternity to eternity, or the end from the beginning. In each age, something happened. Okay, now these are set in a threefold fashion one, two, three. One, two, three. Why? Because if you listen to the moderation, when, yeah, when Moses was up here in the cloud, he was up there 40 days and 40 nights, okay? And for 33 days that Moses was up there, for the second time he went up into the mount, Yahweh showed him the construction of this tabernacle pattern and told him he's going to make one like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern one, two, three. Most holy place, holy place, and 
court on the bow. And he told them what kind of instruments to put in there, how to make them, what material to make them with. And also, he set up a priesthood, Aaronite priesthood. Aaron and his three sons, and his two sons, Aaron is the oldest, Nadab and Abihu were his brothers. Okay? They talked about Aaron and Nadab in the seminar. Okay? And they're to make they're to perform in this tabernacle. Okay? Not just anybody can just walk in there. Okay? And that'll be the last time they ever took a step. But the high priest was anointed with holy anointing oil. They poured it on top of his head, drilled down his beard all the way down to his feet. Okay? To anoint him so that he could perform the task in this tabernacle. And you could read all about it at the end of Exodus and in the, uh, Deuteronomy. Okay? Now, so Dr. Kenley, after he had this vision, he would go out preaching this thing that anybody that wanted to hear about it. And later on, when he came out to California, he had this drawn up, okay? Uh, painted. The original one is uh, was painted on a bed sheet, okay? And it still exists. But see, everything is in threefold fashion according to the tabernacle pattern, okay? Because this is what everything goes by. And it's a one, two, three. You can break down a rock, you can break down a flower, anything you want to get into, break it down in one, two, three. Okay? But the principles we want to understand, okay, by this thing that they're going over, the seven steps in this tabernacle. First is the gate. Seventh is a brazen altar of sacrifice with the four horns in a corner, which the high priest would take the blood of the sacrifice and place it on the four corners or on the horns of the, of the, of the, of the altar here. Okay? The next step is the brazen labor of water, where the high priest would wash, also he would cleanse the sacrifice. Okay? Fourth is the door. Or the first veil, okay, which the high priest, when he was anointed, stood at the door. Moses poured the holy anointing over, over, over him, and he was anointed, him and his sons, okay, so they could minister in his tabernacle, okay. A cup of the holy anointing oil was symbolized spirit, okay. Now going through the veil, you enter which is the holy place, is a fifth step. In here, you have the three inst instruments, okay, which is a golden candlestick, seven branch candlestick, made out of, of beaten gold, okay. Second is the table of showbread, or shoe bread, whatever you want to call it. Had a golden crown around it, with 12 loaves of bread. I know they only showed two, but there should be 12. Okay? And it corresponds to other things. Okay, bread. So you have light, bread, and right here you have the altar of incense with four ingredients. Okay? Staten, Onika, uh, uh, Obey, and frankincense. They're, only the high priest knew how to mix it up. Okay? How much of what and what. And they would burn on this hill altar here, which would send a, a sweet swell, a smelling Savior unto Yahweh, to the throne of Yahweh. Okay, so there's one, two, three. You have one, two, three here. Okay, that's six. So passing through the second veil, okay, you have the most holy place. Okay, in here, you had this three-fold configuration. You had this chest affair, okay, which had the law, okay, the Ten Commandment law that was given to Moses in the mount, okay. After the first one was broken, he was told to hew out his own table of stone 
but Yahweh was going to write on him the same thing that he wrote on the first sin. And that was to be placed in this ark here. Also, Aaron's rod that budded. Okay, you can read about that event too. But you have to read these things. Okay, to see how they transpired. Okay, and then you had a, a pot of manna. Okay, which when they were out in the wilderness, they complained they didn't have any bread, you know. Yahweh caused it to rain manna, okay, out in the wilderness. And he was told to gather some up, put it in a pot, and put it in the chest of fair. All right? So you had the, the law, Aaron's rod that budded, and the pot of manna. And on top of this chest, you had a seat, okay, like a throne, okay? And on this seat, there are two cherubims of glory, okay? And it looks like they're looking at each other, but what they're doing is witnessing to the Shekinah, okay, that flashes or witnessing to Yahweh Elohim. Because on the Day of Atonement, when the high priest went in there, okay, to do his officiation, to offer up whatever he had to offer up, the sins or, uh, you know, the cleansiness of the tabernacle, he had to present himself there. And it was completely dark in here. Okay? If he made a mistake, they had these things called flesh hooks, poles with these, these hooks at the end, so they go underneath the veil and look for him until they snatch him and they just grab him, pull him out. That's if he messed up on one of the officiations. Okay? And you can read about how he went in there and what he had to do is sprinkle the blood. He had to take coals off the altar of incense, okay? You see he has it right here in his hands. He's swinging around like he's going in on a cloud, you know? So all these things are principles, okay? You have blood on the altar, burial in the labor, and spirit or resurrection through the door with the holy anointing oil, okay? Blood, water, spirit. Okay, light, bread, intercession, throne of Yahweh, spirit law. Okay, now it is two witnesses, Michael and Gabriel. Okay, and they all, they, these are Yahweh's witnesses, not our witnesses, but Yahweh's witnesses. Okay, and everything goes according to this tabernacle pattern. Okay, now. One of the things is, we first come into school, we ask you, well, what do you believe the Messiah came to do? Okay? And the response is generally the same answer. Well, he came to die for our sins. He came to set up a way of life for us. Okay? Uh, we pray to him. All. But what does the Messiah say? That's the thing we point. What does he say he came to do? Okay? And right from the beginning, we find out that after he was born to the Virgin Mary, okay, they had to go into the wilderness of Sinai because he was born under a death decree. Okay? Herod was looking for the king. Okay? He was a king. So he felt threatened. But the scripture says this king is going to be born. Okay? So he went out and he, if you read the story, you find out that the Magi went out following the, the angel of the star. It said where he stays, that's where Yahshua is, the babe, okay? So when they came back and told the king about it, the king wanted, told the Magi, he said, when you go out there, send word to come and get me so I can go worship him, okay? But they feared Yahweh. Okay, they went, they took gifts to the baby, okay, or Yahshua, and uh, they had a, there's a chart. But anyway, uh, birth and conception. Bring that chart up here that way. Yeah. yeah. So, we present these things, these stories, get right into it, leave the other talk out. 
What we want to present is the truth. We all have so much time to do it, okay? And lay a foundation, okay? The birth flight, yeah. Yeah, let me get a conception. So we have conception, birth, and flight. Let's talk about Yahshua the Messiah, okay? And how he came into the world, okay? The angel came to Mary and Joseph and told them that she was going to have a son. She was a virgin, okay? Then, then you have the birth of Yahshua, okay? There, you read about it in Luke, okay? And then he had to flee into Egypt. Okay? Took Yahshua, Mary, Joseph, went into Egypt because of the death decree. Okay? Now, so what happens is, is we learn about his birth. Okay? The world turned it into a whole different thing. I mean, the Roman Catholics, they got you worshiping Mary and all the praying to Mary. All Mary had to do was carry that baby for 40 weeks, okay, or nine months. That was her job, okay, in nourishment, okay. The one you should be worshiping is Yahshua the Messiah, not the mother, okay. They got it all messed up for you. So, okay, now, when the Messiah was of age, or when the angel came and told, uh, or told uh, Joseph it, it's time to get up out of Egypt. Then they went back in Jerusalem, uh, following all the, the ordinances that were given to them, you know, the Passover and all that. So he grew up, and at the age of 30, he went into his ministry. Let's get the uh, John, third chapter, where he goes up to John the Baptist. Okay. Matthew 3. Or Matthew 3. I'm old, I can't remember the numbers. Matthew 3 and 13? Yeah. Matthew 3 and 13. Then come with Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahshua answering him. Read. Answering, um, answering said unto him, Permitted to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. So here you got John, okay? John actually was Joshua's uh, cousin, okay? But, and his father was Zachariah the high priest, okay? And John was supposed to live out in the wilderness, okay? He was the one that was supposed to point out Joshua the Messiah. Uh, I think it's in Malachi where it says he's going to be that voice, that one voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way. Okay? So, at that time, when John and the disciples came, they were baptizing at, Jer at Jordan. All of the Jews that came to Jerusalem confessing their sins. Okay? What do you mean their sins? Well, not keeping this law, okay? Or, we have it bigger over here, these cardinal ordinances, okay? Passed down from generation to generation, from the time it was given to Moses, what, 2,000 years later, the Messiah comes on the scene, okay? And his job was when he came up to John, okay, when the Jews came to John, they would say, I broke the law, I sinned, and John would say, okay, I'm going to bury you in the likeness of his burial and pull him out of the water in the likeness of his resurrection, okay. So here comes the Messiah to John, he's all bald-headed because he took the, the oath of a, of a Nazarene, okay. 
See, it's right there. Now, so he's standing before John and Joshua confess no sins. And then John says, read. Okay, I'll start at 13 again. Then comes Joshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahshua Why? Answered, because he came confessing no sin. Read. And Yahshua answering and said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So he's telling John, baptizing in water. This becomes us because becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So right then and there, this is a fulfillment of water baptism. Okay? An immersion. Well, when was the first immersion? We have it right here in the chart. Earth inundated in water. That's an immersion. Okay? The flood with Noah. That's an immersion. You can't miss that. Okay? When they went through the Red Sea, get the 10th chapter of 1 uh, Corinthians. And this is what he's fulfilling. See, it's lined up here with the Red Sea and the Jordan. You want 10 and 1? Where it says, uh, be not ignorant of one thing. Yes. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All our fathers, okay, from Abraham, uh, the uh, uh, lineage of uh, Isaac, okay, their fathers that were born here in Egypt, okay, they went to the Red Sea to be saved from Pharaoh. Pharaoh was out to kill him. And you can read that over there in the 12th chapter of Exodus. How they had to leave. And how Yahweh set up this Passover. Okay? Which is coming up pretty close. Okay? They had to take this lamb. Okay? A yearly. Hold it over to the 10th. Slave between the two evenings. Okay? And they're to take the blood of this lamb and strike it on the lentil and the two side posts and from the basin that they had the blood they put it down on the threshold. Okay? Four points of blood. A lamb, four points of blood. In the inside of their house. Now when the angel passed over Egypt and where he didn't see the, the blood in their house he would slay the firstborn, man and beast of that house, of that household. And they had to eat that lamb, they had to roast with fire. Okay, I'm paraphrasing here. Okay. And they had to be ready, ready to leave, with their shoes on, their staff in their hands. And they're gonna go and uh, and take uh, from the Egyptian the riches that they could carry, linen, gold, jewels. The whole bit, as much as they could carry with them out of the land of Egypt. There they went up, took a three day journey up to the Red Sea. Keep on reading. And were all immersed unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual food, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that went with them. And the, that rock was the Messiah. Okay, it should be that led them. Okay. Now, so they were immersed in the cloud and in the sea. Okay. That's an immersion or that's a baptism. Okay. So he's fulfilling it here. Continue reading with the, over there with the, uh, uh, John. And this is AD 30. Where uh, after he was baptized, he came up straight I mean, uh, Matthew 3. After, after John told him it was okay to baptize him. Matthew. 
Okay. Um, Yahshua, when he was baptized, he went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah, you see the cloud here with the mouth. Okay, this is my beloved. Baptized in the cloud and in the sea, or in the water. Okay, it's fulfilling that. Fulfilling all modes of water baptism. Put it that way. This is the first mention when he goes into his ministry. Okay? He's fulfilling. That's what he came to do. Okay? And to top it off, this law was only given to the Jews and Jews only. Not to the Gentiles. There's no Gentiles gathered around this mountain here. Okay? And when the law was given from the mount, the children of Israel couldn't stand it. Because it was so loud, they, they all were scared. They pushed Moses, you talk to him. Because if we stand here, you're going to kill us, you know. Which eventually did happen, you know. So uh, Moses goes up there, and he's standing before this, the voice thundering down here, lightning going on, the earth quaking. The first commandment was, let's get it next to this. Always keep in mind this law was given to the Jews and Jews only. Sprinkled on the altar, 
And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh has said will we do and be obedient. All that Yahweh said will we do and be obedient. Okay? And the next thing you know, Moses is going up into the cloud. Okay? Into the mountain. And he got him up, south up another 40 days and 40 nights. While Moses was up there, seeing this event or recapitulation, what he saw the second time he went up to the mount, okay, when he came down from the mount, let's get that, I'm not going to get into all particular because that's a whole uh, uh, lecture there, uh, when, he, when Moses was coming down with the table of stones. Oh. Okay, the second time, when he comes down, he sees, this is the second time he goes up, excuse me, not the third time. The second time, when he sees the creation of heaven and earth, on the sixth day he sees a man created, and the woman taken out of the man, and they're up there in peace and love and harmony and everything, and then Yahweh rests on the seventh day, and then after that, for 33 days, he sees the construction of this tabernacle. So at the end of 33 days, Joshua told Moses, or Joshua, Joshua told Moses that he heard a noise of war in the camp. You get down and see what's going on. Just pick that up. So when Moses gets close, he got it right here on the plateau. Okay. And Mo, I mean, after Moses seen what he's seen up here, you know. You want to forget in the 32nd chapter where the people said that Moses was delayed? Well, yeah, just get with the theme. Okay, okay. let me get, okay. Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down on the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto, and said unto him, uh, Make us a deity which shall go and be for us. For as this Moses, the man, that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We know not what became of him. Okay, so we wouldn't be any different because what they seen, this cloud, this pillar that led them out of the land of Egypt was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And when they went into the wilderness, this cloud went on top of Mount Sinai and looked like a consuming fire. I mean, lightning and all that going on here. And here you got Moses, this little man, going into this cloud. What are you going to see? And he didn't come down for after 40 days. So what are you going to see? You're no different than what these guys are baking out here. You're no better. So they went up to Aaron. He said, we don't know what happened to this Moses. He went up in there and, oh, you see the ball of fire up there, you know. Read. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people breaketh off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned them in mold, and he made out of it a molded cap. Yeah. So take off your earrings, you know. Well, why are your earrings? You know, the golden earrings. Well, if you look at the tabernacle pattern, okay, you have the Ark of the Covenant, which had golden rings there for the staffs, okay? Now, what they did, they told Aaron, make us a deity or a god, and let that one be the one that led us out of the land of Egypt. Okay, after what they went through and everything, they wanted a God. Okay, they wanted a deity. And they built it. Okay, they threw the gold and said they threw it in the fire and out came a golden calf. Now they were partying around them and they're having an orgy, a good old time over there. And the way Will says anything, everything happened here. So when Moses comes down, you know, you can see the expression on his face. He sees what's going on, he took the table of stones and broke it beneath the mount. You want me to read that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's 32 and 9. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I 
have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let them alone, that my wrath might wax hot against them, and that my and I may consume them, and I may make thee a great nation. And Moses besought Yahweh Elohim and said, Yahweh, that I do with thy wrath wax hot, thy people which thou hast brought, out, brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and mighty hand. Therefore, should the Egyptians speak, speak and say for mischief, and did bring them out and slay them, etc. In other words, Moses intercessed for the children of Israel. Okay, but at the point, get to the point where he's at the table of the stone, and he's going to throw them down. Yahshua told him, "Get down, because there's a noise of war in the camp." Yeah. Exodus. 32 and 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mas mastery. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger grew hot. Is this the people that said, uh, that Joshua told them, the people said that, I hear, you know, we hear it would be obedient, and look what's happening. And Moses gets mad, said wax, he got mad, read. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt him in the fire and ground it to powder, and strew it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. You know, when you get gold, especially those that go mining, mining and panic for gold, I tried it, you know. The real fine gold doesn't sink. And gold's like that, one of the heaviest metals. It floats on the water, okay? So when he ground us up, he had ground up into a fine powder and threw it on the water and it's like a, a, a lake of gold, you know, and they had to drink it, okay? Now, after that, they went out and chastised the people. Those that were on Yahweh's side, Aaron, uh, Moses told Aaron to strap on your swords, the uh, priest, and they went out through the camp slaying the ones that didn't want to obey Yahweh. Okay. And didn't agree with them? Well, at least they, what was it, 3,000 fell that day. Okay. So after Yahweh pleaded to Yahweh, after Moses pleaded to Yahweh to for, for, let him take the fault for the children of Israel, Yahweh said he's going to have vengeance on them that, that broke his law. Okay. And, and uh, Moses, uh, Yahweh said that he's going to blot out, if you could pick that up. Their name out of the book. Okay. Moses also saw when he seen the Elohim, okay, Aaron ate up and by you, some of the of Israel, saw the Elohim of Israel. Okay. Now Moses saw Elohim had a book. Okay. In that book is every man that is going to be born on the face of the earth. And he told Moses when he was pleading for the children of Israel, that he was, Yahweh was going to block their name out of the book. Read. 30. 32, uh, 32 and 30. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to Yahweh preventure, and thou shalt make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them idols of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I, I pray thee, out of, the, out of thy book which thou hast written. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Whomsoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of this book, out of my book. Okay. So Yahweh tells Moses that he's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why were the children of Israel talking about idols? Build them an idol. Well, remember, they're down here in Egypt. And Egypt was full of idols. They couldn't help it. They had idols. So many times when you read through the prophets, 
There's always a part where Israelites had to cleanse themselves, give up their idols. And there's some part where people kept their idols and they paid for it. Yahweh, you can't hide up from Yahweh. Okay? But that's the problem with idols, idolatry. Okay? So, and also, if you look at this, Elohim is a book. He's not standing there with a book. Okay, that's for just understanding. Okay, and he told Moses, he's the book of life. Okay, we got to be in him to survive. Okay, and they talk about this wrath of Yahweh. Well, if you're not in him, you're going to burn. You're going to go to the lake. Okay, now, so that, all these things are happening to the children of Israel, okay? The things they went through. The baptism, Yahweh, the Yahshua went through. And if they came confessing their sins, saying they didn't keep the law like their forefathers, okay? Like their forefathers kept it. Well, you got to baptize me. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. So John the Baptist is out there baptizing, you know, and John the Baptist mission was to baptize and point out Yahshua the Messiah or the Lamb. There's another part, a part there, uh, might be John, where it says or Moses, uh, or John was baptizing out here. And he saw Yahshua coming and he pointed him out to the crowd there. Okay. He says, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh which taketh away the sins of the world. Well, I thought just the Jews were sinning. No. You have to go way back. Way back, all the way down to got the age of the dispensation chart. Okay? You have the physical creation, you got the angelic creation, and the physical creation. So he's going back all the way down to where he creates the first man. Now, the angels, those are the ones that sinned, were cast out. There's no repentance for them. They're like if they were never born. Okay? But the man, okay, that we have here, you know, Yahshua the Messiah, okay, he's going to die from the foundation of the earth. Read. Got it? You want uh, John 1 and 21? Where it says that we're going to... The next day. Okay, the, the next day John's out there baptizing at the Jordan. The next day John sees Yahshua coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man who is preferred before me. Preferred before me. If John was great, okay... He's greater, Read. He was before me. And he was before me. And I knew him not, knew but him. that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come, baptizing with water. Wasn't it Elizabeth's the very sister? That would make John his cousin. First cousin, right? But he said, I didn't know him. Well, he didn't know him in that capacity. That we go that far. He's the savior of the world. Uh... Okay, so he comes to, to, to save the world from sin. All the way back from Adam, the time of Israel was out in the wilderness, the law was given, all the sins of the world was going to be on his shoulders. Okay? And he was going to fulfill what was written in the law. Now, this is the first mention of him saying that he was going to fulfill it. He was walking around the earth playing, doing what he had to do. Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I have come to okay, destroy the Okay, before that, get the, get the kind of what he was doing before he spoke. Okay, start at 1. 1. John 5 1. And seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay. Now here's the Messiah after his 
his baptism, okay, he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, he comes out, he starts picking his disciples, you know, John, Peter, they're all fishermen, you know, and uh, he said, follow me, and they dropped whatever they did, and they followed Yahshua on the side. So at this point, even the disciples are walking, the multitude start following him. You know, it's like uh, I, I, I refer to this thing. Uh, one of the, the brethren, that one of the guys that, that came in, that Yahweh uh, uh, introduced me to this teaching when I first came in. How many of us notice when you go somewhere, the, the place is empty, you know? You go into a store, a little market, the next thing you know is people all over the place. You ever had that experience? You know? Where, you know, you're everybody, ah, oh, nobody's here, you know? You're doing what you do, next thing you look up, and there's people all over the place. You know? And I asked them, you know, I go, hey, Peter, uh, has this has ever happened to you? And, well, you know, why is this uh, happening, you know? You go somewhere, and all of a sudden, all these people are just there, and some of them start staring at you and stuff, you know? It's because they see the light. They can't understand it, but it's that light, okay? It's spiritual, okay? That's what's in you, okay? That, 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 that's glowing out of you, okay? And it's just like bugs. Now, I was in the army, and we'd stay out in the desert for weeks. And I noticed one thing. If you lit a fire out there, every type of insect that, that lives in the desert is going to be attracted to that light. So I try not to be near that light because there's bugs I've never seen before. And bugs are attracted to light. So we look, yeah, I look at, you know, when you go somewhere, you see these people, I refer, oh, look at all these bugs, you know. But anyway, that's beside the point. So here this crowd of people came up in Yahshua Messiah. You know, he came with his disciples and sits on a mount. Read. Oh, and this is the part where it says the Beatitudes. Okay? Now, what the Messiah is doing, he says, Think not. You read that, 17? Okay. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. Why do they say think not? Because Yahweh, Yahshua knew what they were thinking. Read. I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Not come to destroy or bring something else new. Okay, bring in a new philosophy, uh, a new way of life. Okay, but he said he came to fulfill. Ten commandment laws, circumcision, ceremonies, baptisms. Passover, sacrifices, take them in the law. In other words, he came to perform them and move them out of the way. Because that was his job and that was his mission. Okay? There's parts in there that says, you know, seven of them uh, days of old. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt, if you pick up a few verses in there, in the fifth chapter where he gets into this, uh, it said, "Let me uh, time of old. Thou shalt not." I should have got my Bible because I have it all marked off here. Okay. Uh, just read a couple of them. Just to get there. Five and twenty-one. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, "Thou shalt not commit murder," and whosoever commit murder shall be in danger. Read another one. Uh, okay. It's a sound right there. He's 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looketh upon a woman and lusts after her hath committed adultery in her, with her already in his own heart. Okay, so what we have is a repeat. Yahshua decided repeating what happened here in the mount, the giving of the law. He's saying he's coming to fulfill that. Move it out of the way. Okay? Now that's the second time he said that. And he gets into particulars about it. Okay? And not just, just saying it, 
Okay? But after he says that, read that where he goes. 518? Yeah. For verily I say unto you. For verily I say unto you. Till heaven and earth pass, one yod or the smallest letter shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Till all, A L L, be fulfilled. See, we have these arrows pointing to the nails. Okay. In other words, he didn't hang on the cross for nothing. He nailed all these ordinances, take them out of law, the 650 or something ordinances and stuff. I, I, I'm bad at numbers. I can't remember numbers. That's the problem with me. Nail them to his cross. Okay? That's where they're going to stay. Okay? This flesh and then the cross. This flesh was consumed. Okay? Jeremiah 31 31. Matter of fact, finish reading that. Over there, in the, let her get Jeremiah 31 31. You finish reading what? Okay. And Matthew. And this is what the Messiah told us to do. Okay, uh, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach them so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. Uh, get to where I think we read Moses is across the T. Back up. Okay, I know, but okay. 18 again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one yacht, or the smallest part in the letter, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. The law, okay. Continue reading. So we're, did it mention Moses in that one there? No. Okay. To the law. Okay. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh. Okay, he says he's going to make a new covenant. Now in your King James Version and other Bibles, Gideon, they have a little leaflet after the, uh, after the prophets, after Malachi. It says the New Testament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they have all, the, all these uh, books of uh, disciples and apostles. Okay. No, that is not the New Testament. Those letters that you read, they're letters. It's private mail between the apostles and the congregations or the, of the brethren after the day of Pentecost that they're experiencing. Okay. That is not the New Testament. Okay. Jeremiah just said, the New Testament is not, not going to be like this thing that was written in stone and paper. Okay? Continue reading. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. You're going to write it in their hearts, not on tables of stone. Although the Ten Commandments was uh, uh, shaped like a heart. But this is going to be written in you, in your soul. Read and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach me no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. And what are we doing now? We're learning about Yahweh. Okay? We're not doing ceremonies, works of righteousness and things. Why? Because that's what he nailed to his cross. He took that out of the way. Okay? For the Jews. After the day of Pentecost, the ones who were up in the upper room, 
Okay? In Jerusalem, they received the Holy Spirit. They were Jews. Seven years later, the Gentiles were brought in. They were given the Holy Spirit. They didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was believe. Okay? All they had to do was believe. But still, you read the verse where they, they created their own works of righteousness. You know, kind of like what the Jews were doing. They're always watching the Jews. And the Jews watching them. You know? Read. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon, and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. Okay. So, you know, I grew up in church, and a lot of us did. I read this teaching. And one of the things they have you do is come up to the altar and uh, pray for your sins, you know. But didn't Jeremiah say that, he always said that he's going to remember your sins no more? You know? Sin is what? Transgression of the law. There's a, a scripture that says that. Sin is transgression of the law. You broke one of those sins, <coughs> you had to bring a sacrifice. Okay. There was an event one time out here in, in the wilderness on the seventh day. They were supposed to do no work. They were supposed to gather this manna on the sixth, a little bit more, and hold them over to the seventh. Okay. And do no work. While there happened to be a man out there picking up sticks for a fire for the family. And they brought him to Moses. Say, we found this guy picking up sticks, you know. What do we do? Moses stole him. Okay. And I, I like the, you know, the Christian, oh, God is good and all this stuff. And there's a bit where he went after Amalek, okay, and told him to slaughter him. Kill babes, our old man, kids. Slaughter him. You know. God is good. Yahweh has a purpose. Okay? You have to understand what's going on here with his, with the children of Israel and with Yahweh. You have to go all the way back with Abraham. Okay? Now, so Yahshua says, so we read it in the prophets. Uh, let's get to Luke uh, 24. In 25. Now this is the event here after the Messiah after 33 and a half years of his life, three and a half years of his ministry, he was put on the cross. Okay. Let's start at 13. Yeah. And the, and behold, two of them went the same day to the village called Emmaus. Okay, this is after he resurrected from the dead. Okay. And he's appearing to these two disciples walking through Emmaus. And they're discussing, they're sad and everything, and discussing the events of Yahshua being crucified and everything. You know, and here's Yahshua appearing, read. Which was from Jerusalem and about seven and one half miles. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they were communing together and reasoned, Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So Yah Yahweh blocked their, 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 their uh, sight so they couldn't uh, recognize Yahshua. Okay? Blinded him. No, they could see because they're on the way, but uh, as far as the veil, you know, we got veils, principle of veil, revealing and concealing. Read. And he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk? Okay. And are sad? This is the Messiah talking to the disciples. What, what, what kind of uh, conversation are you having here, okay? Uh, about this, this thing that's happened over here at uh, Golgotha and all this, you know, read. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? What are you, a stranger in Jerusalem? Read. 
and has not known the things which are come to pass. And you didn't know what happened? There are these days. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, What things? And Joshua, What things? Read. And they said unto him concerning Joshua of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed. And he's standing right there. Read. And the word before Elohim and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it would, it had been would, he would should have redeemed Israel. Okay, stop right there. Take that. Go to where, you might have to look it up on Google, where the Messiah and the disciples are checking out the Herodian temple and see how glorious it was. And Peter was there and, and, uh, and uh, the Messiah is explaining what he has to do. Okay? And then Peter starts rebuking him. Because the Messiah starts saying, well, he has to go into Jerusalem, suffer many things, and be killed. Okay, and then Peter goes up and says, oh, this is not going to happen to you. And Yahshua rebuked him. Okay. Matthew uh, 16, 22. Let's see what it is. So these two guys up there all sad and everything, but this is the thing that the Messiah has been saying all the time that he's been walking around in his ministry for three and a half years. What he was going to do? Be fulfilled and die on the cross for the sins of the world. Um, and they're passing by the Herodian temple, okay, which was in so many years in the building, which uh, Joshua, uh, 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 the supposed father of Joshua, uh, Joseph, he was a carpenter. Probably worked on the temple. To Yahshua, since being a son, he probably worked with him too. Okay? It was a, like a public uh, works uh, deal, you know. How long is it Luke or? Uh, put in that, uh, oh, uh, get behind me Satan for the honor of Ben something. Put that in your own pop up first. Here's this one, 16:22. Then Peter took him, oh, I'll start at 21. From that time forth began Yahshua to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things. Uh, see, he's got to go and show the disciples what he had to do. Read. Of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Rabbi, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, adversary. Thou art an offense unto me, okay. for thou savorest not the things that be of Yahweh, but those that be of men. Yeah, that's out of the uh, holy name, right? Yeah. Anyway, why is he saying that? Remember, he's fulfilling. What happened to the woman here in the garden? Okay, you see Lucifer standing here. Eve looking at him. Okay. Get that over there in, in uh, Genesis. Okay, where the adversaries want to deceive the woman. And the woman is telling the adversary what Yahweh said. That's our 31. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may not, we may not eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Ye should not eat of it, or neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. At least you tell the adversary this. The adversary know what Yahweh told the woman, because he's repeating it to her. Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, No death will you die. No death shall, sh shall you die. Like Peter standing up to the Messiah in his face, No, you're not going to die. 
you know, and he rebuked them. Okay? And that's what caused the death of Eve and Adam. And their expulsion out of the garden. Okay? So here's the Messiah catching up to these two disciples. And they're re rehearsing the matter to the Messiah. After all, you've been explaining this thing to him at, in his ministry. And Peter gets rebuked because he's explained to the disciples that he has to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. Okay? Get back to uh, uh, Luke 24, 25. Finish reading that up. Okay, 21. But we trust that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. But besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Three days after, okay, read. Yea, and a certain woman also of our company made us aston astonished, which were earlier at the sepulcher. And when they had not found his body, they came saying that they had, not, that they had seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the woman had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart. So the Messiah said unto these guys, O fools, slow of heart. Why? Because he told them about these things were going to happen. Read. And so far to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expound to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. So if somebody asks you, what's the thing of the law and the prophets? Well, they point to the Messiah. Well, how the churches, they think it points to them. How in the world, I'll put it that way, whatever religion you're into, whatever form, they think it points to them. And they know in their hearts you couldn't keep it. Those of us that come into this, into this teaching come in with a condemned mind, knowing that they're not going to make it to heaven because they know that they broke some kind of law in their life, you know. But it wasn't meant to keep. Okay? It all points to Yahshua the Messiah. The law and the prophets. That's why we read in Jeremiah that the New Testament is going to be written in your heart and your mind. Revelation is giving where it says that the, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Okay? And remember, we read in John, or in Matthew, that when John seen the Messiah, coming to him, he pointed him out. Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh which taketh away the sins. That's a, that's a human being, two-footed even, but he called him a lamb. Okay, read. Okay, uh, Revelations 13 and, and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Those names are not written in the book of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, this is the Lamb slain from the foundation. Coming, they, they went through it in a seminar that these nine divine uh, uh, attributes. attributes form this body here. Okay? Also, we have these attributes in us. Okay? This is the Lamb slain the foundation of the world. Coming out of pure spirit into shape and form. Later on, manifesting in the flesh. And he's fulfilling this by dying on the earth plate. See this right here? This is the earth. Okay. The lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. The lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Didn't Moses see him create the heavens and earth here? It's coming out of him. He was slain, in other words, he died coming into the shape and form. Then, to the half man here, the whole creation comes out of him. Okay. But Moses goes up the third and final time with the table of stones 
place them in the place that the first one was made. The second said, then Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim put him to sleep again. He showed him a recapitulation and then showed him the adversary entering into the garden and deceiving the woman and the man. Now we understand when he came down the third and final time why the children of Israel did what they did. Okay? Because of that boy up there. Okay? This guy here, the serpent, you know, this two legged serpent, deceived the whole world. Okay? So when Moses comes down, after he sees them getting kicked out of the garden, Okay, see them kicked out of the garden, then they started multiplying, okay, Cain and Abel, kind of darker here, we see uh, 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 Eve sitting there with the child, Cain, okay, and we knew that uh, Cain slew his younger brother Abel, okay, out of jealousy, okay, just like the adversary. Jealous, okay, evil, okay, and all that goes into learning about Yahshua the Messiah, okay. Now the first man Adam, let's pick that up in Romans, I believe, was a figure of the second man Adam. So we have a. a And this event here is a descending, okay? Descending event. They died, they passed through the veil, okay? They'd be kicked out of the garden. Now they gotta eat from the, uh, the face of the bra, or the sweat of the bra, okay? I have another one, it's Romans 5 and 12. Therefore, as one man, sin entered, entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For, in, for until the law was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So death reigned from Adam to Moses. Adam was the first one to break the law. Children of Israel, all of one accord, broke the law, which made the sins of Adam exceedingly more sinful. You found that one? Just look it up in Google. It's fast. Which, no, which one? It says the first man, Adam, was from the earth. Yes, um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 47. The first man, Adam, is of the earth earthly. The second Adam is Yahshua from heaven. Yahshua from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. See, the birth here in Isaiah was prophesied. Okay, I don't know if that's uh, uh, Isaiah... Uh, 56 or something around there. I said, Behold. Maybe the scripture might be up here somewhere. Uh, just uh, he was born. But it was prophesied that Yahshua the Messiah, oops, Yahshua the Messiah was going to be born from a virgin. Okay? So it's prophesied that he was going to be born in the world of a virgin, okay? And you read about it here in, in Matthew, where the, the, the angel came down and told Mary that, don't be afraid, but I think it's in you, it's holy, okay? So, I got it. You got it? Isaiah 7, 
and 14. Therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. He's going to give you a sign. All right, read. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, which means I'll have a you. So they're waiting because it's been prophesied that the Messiah is going to come. Okay, and save them. Okay, so now the sign is a virgin shall conceive. They didn't know that Mary was a virgin, or you know, or, or you know, they, Joseph had uh, put her away for a while, and he himself was, you know, kind of, I would say skeptical, but you know, he, he was upset. Yeah, because uh, he, you know, didn't know the woman that she's going to conceive, you know, and it's, uh, you know, if that happened today, you would kind of think, well, you know, she's messing around on me, you know, how could this happen? You know, but that thing was from Yahweh Elohim. Okay, that 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 seed that was put in him, the conception. Okay, conception. Okay, then he was born, come to the loins of the Virgin Mary, holy place, a most holy place, holy place, and then court roundabout where they went into Egypt. Okay, here. They were in the manger, okay? They had light, they had food, remember that they came with gifts and all that. Intercession with the kings, light, bread, intercession, okay? They went into to, uh, to, uh, to Egypt here, Joseph and Mary and Joshua, because of what? Death decree put out by Herod. Death, okay? Now, Joseph uh, had a dream, okay? Here we have it right here. It was told to him to go down into Egypt. In other words, he was immersed in this dream, okay? So you have death, burial, and then Yahweh gave him word to leave Egypt, resurrection, okay? All going by the pattern, and that's all we want to talk about. I know we have problems in this world that we want to get off our shoulders, but leave that for outside the class. You know, but we want we have enough time to get into this teaching, to learn about it the proper way. Lay a good foundation for the next speaker to get into. Now we spoke a lot of things. Okay? The end is declared right from the beginning. Okay? Lamb slain from the foundation. Manifested on the earth, concrete. Okay, if this lamb was slain, for, this lamb's got to be slain in the foundation. Okay, if they are baptized out here in the water, he's fulfilling it. He's getting baptized. Okay, we don't have to do that stuff. You going out there doing this stuff? It was said years ago to me when I first came in there. When you do these things. You're calling Yahshua a liar to his face. Oh, I got to do the Lord's Supper today, you know. What? Didn't he fulfill it by eating with his, his disciples? Took the bread and all that? Broke it, drank the wine, or the bitter herbs? Said that was the blood? But you, you, you're, you're sitting in front of this uh, priest there, and he's actually changing the blood of uh, uh, the wine into the actual blood of Yahshua, taking a piece of cracker or wafer or whatever and, and turning it into the actual flesh? What kind of crap is that? You're being deceived. You're calling Yahshua the Messiah, a liar to his face when you do that. Saying, no, I, you, it wasn't good enough that you did that or you didn't do it. Talk about blasphemy. Now he's supposed to be operating in us. Okay? Now, uh, yeah. uh, so uh, and there's a lot more, but like I say, what we want to do is present. I know I took a long way around, but I, I wanted to show how this thing is in from the beginning, using the pattern, okay? This pattern here. And using the wilderness for a, a 
greater, more perfect tabernacle is showing these events. I know I didn't get into every precept, okay? The death, the burial, the resurrection, but it's, it's all in the stories, okay? A 40 page chart, a lot of stories. There's some stories not even put on there. When you read them, you can see the operation of this tabernacle. If they go somewhere and they step over a puddle of water, where the guy's sweating, you know, before he died, well, that's blood and water. You know, that's simple. It's going by the pattern. No, how mad, no, doesn't mean, doesn't matter how small an event happened, it's going by the pattern. And the more you know this, the more you know Yahshua the Messiah in you. And that's our hope of salvation. Things that happen to us, they're going to happen. Dr. Kennedy, you read his uh, manuscripts and stuff. You know, you go to uh, uh, Carla's website, uh, archetypepattern.org. You know, you could look at those uh, uh, manuscripts, you know, uh, actual lectures that he went through, okay? And he would tell you these things. Okay, in these lectures. Okay, uh, I don't think what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, read those things, and it'll help you understand what this teaching is all about. He said, the founder said, or Dr. Kinley said, that we have to endure. Okay, these things are going to happen. You know, whether you suffer or you don't suffer. You know, uh, we experienced, we, I experienced, we experienced in our class uh, uh, over in Ontario. Okay, uh, Joe was a dean there. I was filming him uh, that, that day, uh, a couple of days before he passed. And he was running up and down the, the stage, pointing to this, just preaching the gospel. Next time we had class, he didn't show up. He made it as far as the parking lot. We didn't know until after class when, when we got out and a couple of members went out to check, see what was going on. And, you know, it looked like uh, he was arguing with somebody on the phone. I didn't want to go in there because it was none of my business, you know. So we stood and uh, we kind of waited until he looked around and we could wave to him. A couple of people went up there and, you know, he waved them off. But anyway, that was the last time that, uh, that he was in class. And, uh, what, about a few weeks later he passed, a month or something like that. He passed in the hospital. You we don't know, you know. Uh, you know, he didn't want to be in the hospital. It didn't look like he was suffering too much, but seeing that he had a massive stroke, you know. But some go under sleep, but some are suffering. I know people, that, some people that are suffering, you know, me, I'm on pills constantly to, uh, our body's just in pain, you know, but you have to endure, you know. It's got to endure it till the end and it's going to be worth it because once this whole thing is gone, this whole creation, we go into a whole new creation, okay? And that's the thing that, uh, that, I can't wait for it, you know, because like it says, once we're all in Yahweh Elohim, it's going to be, we will be what we will be, okay? Because we're part of Him, we're all, we will be what we will be, next, the, me the next uh, creation. So all this stuff that you're watching on TV, you know, sci-fi, you know, that just, that's just, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, I don't say a glimpse or anything, but that's, that's, it's, Imagination. it's impossible for that to happen, but with Yahweh, we'll be in the next, we don't know what we're going to be. Like it says, we don't know what we're going to be, you know, but it ain't going to be like this, that's for sure. Why do you want to live in this world? I mean, why, why, why are you hanging on to these things? It ain't worth it. Put your attention to this. Yeah, we got to work, we got to do all this stuff to sustain his body, 
you know, sustain your family, whatever. But do it. Be caught so doing, you know. And uh, well, I'm gonna close it up. Uh, I thank everybody for for watching. I didn't mean to take up the whole time, you know. But I thought it was important to stress how you have to lay a foundation, especially for new people that come in. Okay, you want to let they they have a whole idea of something else. We know because we did. We were there before. Their conception of the Savior, and we just showed what the Savior is, who He is, and what His mission was. And it's up to them to go back, okay, rehearse it, and have the strength to accept proven, attested facts. Do your research. A lot of people, a lot of us did, and here we are in these, in these classes learning His teaching. I don't care what you call your school. Titles don't mean nothing to me. Okay? As long as you're teaching this teaching that Dr. Kenley brought in to this divine panoramic vision and using the, using the tools that he said. Remember the people, if you know the history of the school, the people wanted a textbook. Why? They seen the other schools. They had textbooks. Kind of reminds me of uh, Israel with King Saul. They wanted a king because Gentiles had a king. Well, yeah, we gave them a king. Okay? Some people don't even read the text, but they said they're telling you not to read it. Okay? In these schools. But the people wanted a textbook. The people wanted a school. Look what it turned into. I know I experienced it. I came in the 80s right before all this stuff start going, you know. I met some of the old heads. I've heard things that they said when they were around the founder, you know. But now, read the last lecture that Dr. Kenny put in 1975, you know. Read that one. And you'll see what's going on, okay. Don't walk around here with a churchy mentality in these schools, okay. It's not church, this is school, okay? We're here to learn, okay? Because we don't want the wrath of Yahweh coming down with us, okay? So, with that, uh, thank you for, for watching. Uh, Joseph Isles out there and colleague Columbia, uh, Helen and uh, Perina out there in, uh, in uh, Baja California, Ensenada, Mexico. Uh, those are out in the Bahamas, uh, all over the, up the East Coast, where Will Williams is at. Uh, hopefully he'll be back next week, but he might be back in a couple of weeks, who knows. He's going to go out there and visit some, some brethren, you know him, man. So, okay, uh, also, uh, let me get, uh, oh. Oh, that's really good about what you call it. I don't know. Let me put this up here. Oh, I also want to uh, uh, ask if anyone out there knows anybody or has a copy. You know, back in the day when you started a school, I came in in the 80s, and uh, Peter Godot and I started up a school in West Covina. And uh, they used to have these slides, color slides, of the original charts that you could trace in your home and put it up on a canvas. You could trace it out and later on uh, get the paints and paint them. We should do that, you know. But uh, I don't have the slides. And I'm asking if anybody knows that anybody has these slides, you know, if they could send them to me or call me. What I would like to do is put them on a memory stick well, that way I could take them to a printer and have these charts made up. Okay, I want the original charts. Okay, I've been finding uh, uh, things on these charts that are not, not according to the original charts. The more original I could get, the better. That way I don't have to be making corrections. Okay, so if you know anything, anybody has these slides, please let me know. 
of the, of all these slides, all the charts, okay? Because I'd like to have a copy of those original charts. Okay, uh, I'm going to call the net to come up and uh, give the doxology and dismiss us. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next Sunday. stand to be dismissed, I'll be reading the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.